Pastor True, week uh, three in the stewards series is about how we steward our time. If you would have had more time on Sunday morning, where would we have spent it? Well, time, I guess. I didn't even <laughs> yeah. plan that. Well, yeah, that's that's kind of funny because I'm I'm not exactly not exactly pleased with how I prioritize the time in my sermon on Sunday. Sometimes it doesn't come together the way that uh, that we hope. But I use the Philippians two passage, the famous one, um, where Paul um, uses what they think is an early Christian hymn to uh, to talk about the the nature of Christ. You know, who being in very likeness God. And, uh, made himself nothing, form of a servant, made himself obedient even to death. And uh, so my goal was to use Jesus as an example um, for the, the perfect steward of time. Made the comment that uh, in Jesus' life and ministry, particularly those three years, he never seemed rush, he, rushed. He always seemed... Um, to be in alignment with uh, with God's um, purposes with regard to how he used his time. Even when he would get interrupted, he would uh, redeem that time and and use it for good and for furthering his goal and his purposes. Um, if I had had more time, though, uh, I probably would have talked a little bit more about how we struggle with prioritizing our own time. Um, we live in a world with uh, countless activities, countless distractions, uh, countless sources of information and input that we can put into our brains. And uh, you know, when I'm when I'm counseling people or in the discipleship relationships that I have, uh, the small groups that I'm part of, something that comes up over and over and over again is uh, that people regret not spending more time in the Word and not spending more time in prayer. And they talk about seasons of their life when they were really good about those things and how at peace they, they felt. And yet, um, and I can say this in my own life, seasons in my own life as well, um, you know, it's easy, it's easy for, for the, those those activities that are truly life-giving uh, with regard to our relationship with God. Um, you know, it's so easy in different seasons for that to be the first thing on the chopping block. Mm. Interesting. You're looking at time in a really big picture, which is perfect, uh, and, but not where my brain went immediately when I saw this on the docket mm -hmm. coming up you know, for the, for the series, I was more thinking of like Sabbath and, uh, maybe speaking to, you know, our culture, our congregation, which is really busy, active congregation, uh, and maybe encouraging people to slow down, but maybe that's too focused, you know, like in the present moments now, day to day. And you're more thinking about it more holistically, like, hey, when, you know, the microphone thing from early in the sermon, uh, you know, time is a drop in the bucket. If, if we can see the bigger picture and, and do some more heavenly minded stuff, yeah, that's the best way to think about time, not how do I get enough rest, which is, which is maybe where my brain went first. Yeah, well, it's all it's all intertwined. But, you know, I remember the conversation that we had last week, um, you know, when we talked about stewardship of resources, and you brought up the example of Brother Lawrence, mm -hmm. where, I mean, he doesn't necessarily discuss time per se, but really that's a perfect application because... He used his time and he was mindful of using his time, no matter what activities that he was engaged in, mm -hmm. um, f using it as an opportunity to, to, praise, to praise God and to, to do even mundane, normal, everyday tasks in a way that pleased God and glorified God. And so that's more where I was going. 
because you think about, I mean, you think about the things that we spend a lot of time on and I, I hate to, I hate to, you know, knock technology and technological advances all the time, but you know, we have our screens and our phones and our, our devices and, you know, they can be wonderful tools, but so often they become our masters and we, we can't stay off of them. But really, what are we, what benefits in a spiritual ultimate sense are we getting from, um, from those things that we spend so much time on? Would we be better served using that time to read God's word, to spend time in prayer, to fellowship with with other believers. It's not like we don't have the time. It's that we haven't prioritized it in the most beneficial way for us and definitely in the most pleasing way for God. You're touching on some of the things we got into in the recent adult Sunday school session on technology and how you know it becomes our master so quickly. Uh, I was... We were we were talking in adult Sunday school about how it just you know TV and YouTube and f scrolling through our phones becomes our first option um, just by default now. It just shared you know we usually watch TV for an hour or so, maybe two, maybe three after we put the kids down for bed, and like routinely we'll say, "Man, we should use this time better." And then not long ago, we said, we should use this time better. And then said, what else would we do with this time? Like we couldn't even conceive <laughs> yeah. of a better way to, because just tech just dominates our free time. Uh, so we, just thinking about that in adult Sunday school, I, we bought our house from my great uncle Willie, who I don't think had a TV uh, and so when we toured the house, he was still living there. He just had on his bookshelf just a set of commentaries. Yeah. That was like the only thing up on the bookshelf. And so I think of that often while I'm reclining on my couch watching some, you know, sitcom. Like, what would Uncle Willie be doing in this yeah. room right now? Yeah. And I, you know, like I said, I, technology in and of itself is not evil. Sure. But it's very tempting. And really, you know, t technology dominates our free time is what you said. But um, above that, <clears throat> habits dominate our lives. And so, you know, I don't, I don't think anyone needs to feel guilty if they want to relax and watch an hour of TV sure. each day. I don't think anybody needs to, to feel guilty about utilizing those devices in in the proper way in a way that's beneficial i mean they bring a lot of added value to life with sure. regard to organization uh but you know it's developing the the proper habits with regard to time and you know time i didn't say this but time is time is a commodity and it's a valuable commodity because it's it's a creation of god that can either be redeemed and used for his glory or like other aspects of creation it can be twisted and serve to displease him and actually um deteriorate our quality of life a, a lot mm. one of the things i appreciate about that it's kind of a classic book on the sabbath by abraham heschel he talks about sabbath as tithing time mm which mm -hmm. I had never heard of before, but a way of saying like, God, I realized just like with financial resources, which was last week, all of this is yours. Uh, and so I want to give some of it back to you. The same is true of time, which, you know, the first time reading that is like, whoa, yeah, all time is God's. Mm -hmm. And so we tie this little bit back. And so just when you're talking about habits dominating our lives, which is exactly right, how does, how does the habit of Sabbath change our relationship with time. Yeah. Like, like tithing our financial resources changes our relationship with our material things. 
A Sabbath, if nothing else, reminds us that history is propelled forward by God and his work and his purposes. And when we jump into the work week or we, when we're using our time, we are partnering with God in accomplishing his purposes or uh, not that God is going to be hindered, but, but not being a part of it, right? And so Sabbath is a wonderful reminder that our time is valuable to God and that it belongs to him and that uh, we should be using it wisely.